In Matthew 4.19, Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Join us in this conversation as we discuss following Jesus, leadership, and doing life with others. Welcome to the 419 Disciple Makers Podcast. Hello, and welcome to this episode of 419 Disciple Makers Podcast. My name is Beth Laurie. I'm so glad to be with you today. Um, today, I brought on a special guest and a dear friend, Amy Van Haveren. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you today? I am good, and we're so glad to have you with us. Thank Amy you. is the um, Disciple Life Coordinator here at Mount Pisgah. She's been in this role for just a few months, but she's also a dear friend of mine. Uh, we have known each other for several years and have uh, been on our own disciple-making journeys together. And mm-hmm. I um, have Amy coming on today to talk to us about prayer But Amy, before we do that, I'd love for you to share just a little bit of your own journey, maybe how you became a disciple of Jesus and a disciple maker. Absolutely. I'm happy to. So I came to Mount Pisgah. uh, Really what what brought me in was the children's programs on Wednesday night. And um, I brought my kids and was happy to drop them off. But then... um, Sure enough, Susan Fan tracked me down in my corner of the church and um, ended up spending two years with me, Um, just her and I. We met weekly, and um, she discipled me and and really changed my life. And then from there, I met Beth, um, and I ended up uh, in a discipleship group with her and uh, several other ladies and um, really grew in my relationship with Jesus at that time. And so I learned to uh, just trust Jesus with my life and truly ended uh, up surrendering my life through um, that experience and sharing and being vulnerable with with these other ladies. And um, they're dear friends to me to this day. And um, I'm just very grateful. Yeah. And you also became a disciple maker after that. Yeah. So now I have a group that I lead um, with Kristen Finley, and we are just starting our third year. uh, And and we have um, been meeting consistently uh, despite COVID and everything else. We have um, been able to to keep that consistency in our group. And it's it's just a wonderful experience. We've grown closer through everything. And um, I look forward to, to seeing my ladies every week now. Hmm. That's wonderful. It's wonderful to hear your journey and how God worked in your life to uh, not only bring you a relationship and trust, but then also uh, move you into a place of pouring into others. Mm-hmm. Really inspiring. So Amy is a prayer warrior, and I thought Amy could come on and talk to us a little bit about prayer and discipleship. So what if we start off with just defining what is prayer? It's a big word. Well, I think initially when we think about prayer, uh, we think about praying for things that we want, whether it be material things or just peace or order um, among all these chaotic things that are swirling around. Uh, but as I grew in my relationship with Christ, uh, prayer became more of an alignment with him, I would say, and, um, realizing as my trust grew in him, that he is on my side and that he knows what's best for me. And even though he is sovereign over all things, um, in order to sort of be in his, um, flow of things, I needed to align myself with him and, and speak with him on a daily basis and trust that he is hearing me and that he's answering my prayers. Um, so in addition to praying, also learning to look for, um, the answers to prayer in unexpected places sometimes. Right. Yeah. So that's beautiful because it reminds you to to look back, right? To listen, to see where yeah. God's working and to notice him. Yes. Um, what, a, what, a, what a beautiful relationship mm-hmm. that that develops into. So um, for the next question, which is a hard one, but I think it's an important one, is like, how, how do you pray? I know Jesus asked, uh, the disciples asked Jesus, but 
prayer story can be a little intimidating sometimes. It can be intimidating. I think sort of a breakthrough for me personally was when I realized I didn't have to always um, be on my knees or be all by myself or have eloquent words or things written down um, that really now when I pray, I can sit um, and just say to Jesus, you know, I, I love you and I'm here and I'm listening and thank you for meeting me in this moment. Um, sometimes I have to do that when I'm in the middle of a conversation with my husband or with my children or a friend who is looking for advice or comfort. Um, so I started to understand that prayer is very um, fluid. It can be any time, any place. Um, ideally, I mean, prayer, that's said about being a prayer warrior. So when I think about that, when I am really pouring my heart out and earnestly needing an answer, um, then I will be on my knees. Um, but day to day, um, I've realized that I can just pray in that moment. And um, sometimes my prayer is just one word, it's just Jesus. And that is very centering for me just to say Jesus. It brings me mm. back to, to that moment. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love the way you describe it because it sounds like a friendship with Jesus, like you or just talking to him throughout the day, whenever things come up, whenever mm -hmm. uh, um, topics come to mind, or when you're with people even, or seeing people, you sort of pray over them. So it mm -hmm. sounds like that that scripture that says pray without ceasing is something that you um, you really do. Yes. Um, but so for, say, maybe someone's a new listener or they're new in discipleship and they're just sort of thinking about prayer a little bit more, are there any practical tools? Um, you know, something that can help people pray. I know I, I've talked to a lot of people, and to your point, you said this earlier, maybe when you're young, a written prayer is helpful. I know some people mm -hmm. use the Book of Common Prayer or maybe the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be a great way to start, right? What What else can you Absolutely. think of? Yeah, I often will pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, also, the PRAY, P-R-A-Y acronym um, so that may be a useful, um, just a, a short uh, guide. So the first letter P is for praise. So um, just always saying, you know, thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting me here in this moment. Thank you for, for loving me. Um, and then the repentance. So um, just thinking about um, ways that we um, are sinful, uh, particular things that may have come up or um, you know, asking God to reveal sin in your life that you may not even be aware of. Um, and then the ask, um, petitioning Lord, the Lord for, for whatever it is that you need. If you just need peace that day, uh, if you need um, protection over yourself, your family, your children. Um, and then finally is, is the yield, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done. Um, so a lot of times I will say when I'm more formally praying, um, if I really want something to happen or go a certain way, at the end of it, I realize or try and be cognizant of the fact that, you know, God is sovereign. He knows what's best and his will will be done. Oh, Amy, that is so good. Okay. So I'm going to sort of summarize again for our leaders, because I know that um, you mentioned this, the Lord's Prayer, I think, comes from Matthew 6. Um, there's a whole section from 5 to 14 that talks about Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray, right? So he gives them the the Lord's Prayer, which you just broke down into this wonderful acronym for us. So PRAY uh, stands for P-R-A-Y, uh, Praise, Repent, Ask, and Yield. So those four stages, you can see them in the Lord's Prayer, but you can also use them in our daily time with God, because those, uh, to your point, put us in a posture, right? So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> acknowledging his greatness, acknowledging our, our sin and our dependency upon him, asking for mm -hmm. the things we need. There's tons of scriptures around that. 
but then that yielding, that that moving to trust, right? Right. Um, and so then you you leave this time of prayer, and it probably in a very different mental state, I would think. What do you think? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yep, I think just it, a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How how refreshing it is to just sort of turn over those things to him. Those oh things that we can't. <laughs> yes, such a gift. Such a gift. Mm, yeah, it's so it's so wonderful to be able to trust him uh, on the things that we need him and to do, and only he can do. Um, and he's he's yeah. sovereign and good. Yeah. So when we talk about discipleship, like. How how are prayer requests, like, do you have any good tips or suggestions about prayer requests, maybe in a, in a group setting or um, when you're with others and they want to share their prayer request? How, how have you seen that done? Well, in my discipleship group, I, yeah, sometimes, you know, some days it's, it's easier than others. Um, I think a lot of times we just tend to say, you know what, I'm, I'm good. Everything is, is okay. I don't have anything that I need to pray for. Um, so it's not so much that every time you, you pray, you need to ask for something. Um, so I have said that in the past, as far as, you know, just an acknowledgement of Jesus in your life and being with you throughout the week. Um, and of course he's always with you, but more the uh, realization that he is actually there and working in your life. Um, so when we seem to stumble sometimes, I will say to my members, and actually just this week said, um, you know, what about God sightings? Where have you seen God in your life this week? Um, And try and and get them to be specific about things. And that will help, or it did at least this week, help them to focus a little bit on um, a little bit more specifically on what's going on. Um, so that led to some, some good prayer requests and just the realization that God works in and through all things, you know, big and small. Um, so that's what we did this past weekend and it did, um, seem to help. That's a neat Um, tip. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. And the other thing we had talked about too, was, um, the targeted prayer sheet, which is on the 419 website. Uh, so we're we're entering our third year of discipleship in my group, and we are trying to focus more uh, or more ha- have a more of an outward focus, so a missional focus, um, and starting to pray um, not only deep prayers for each other and heart prayers for ourselves, but also for um, people on our missional prayer list. Um, so that's a different focus as well. Okay, I know that sheet you're talking about, Amy, and it is. It can be very helpful because it sort of does exactly what you were just saying. You know, it, you can talk about something personal, maybe a situation in your life and whether you need praise, like you pointed out. Sometimes that's what we need to do or prayer. We need mm-hmm. to ask uh, for help or trust or whatever. Um, it also, I think, has a section about um, scripture that maybe you could use to help you with that mm-hmm. uh, situation in life. And then the lovely thing that I really I'm so glad you pointed out was the missional prayer list. Part of becoming a disciple and a disciple Mm -hmm. maker is that we're not just thinking about what God can do for us, but we really start to like see people and say, oh, Lord, can I, how could I be a a help to this person or a light to this person or making a list of those that you think might be someone that you could invest in in the future and start praying about it and saying, God, how could I... um, you know, where would you want to use me and who would you want to use me with? And listing those names out uh, can help us become very intentional about uh, filling the Great Commission and becoming uh, disciples that make disciples. Um, So I'm really glad you pointed out that sheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one other thing I I thought of, because I've been in a group with Amy before, but that you do really well is modeling it. So, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes people... (laughs) Prayer requests can go all over the place, can't they? So sometimes yes. people will talk about, like you said, they won't, they don't have anything to say. Or other times they they carry on for a long time, and maybe other people don't get a chance to share. And mm-hmm. other times maybe they have you praying for their neighbor's dog, and not that their neighbor's dog is unimportant, of course. Um, right. That can be. I have I have pets. I get it. Um, but right. you also, are, to your point, you're trying to get them to talk about what's happening in their life and. You do a really good job of modeling that, Amy. Um, I just, mm. I've seen you do that before, and I think that is one of the ways as a leader, right, that can help. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just being able to um, see God working in your own life and be open to things that are going on uh, and bringing that back into the group and being willing to share, you know, being vulnerable, being authentic. Um, and then the group members will see that as well. I, I do, I've shared with you, Beth, in the past, I feel like I, sometimes I talk too much in the group, with, but I, I think I've gotten better over the last couple of years. And I'm, I am finding that as I share more, um, they are willing to do so as well. So it's, it's a give and take. Uh, and it opens the door um, for that authentic relationship we're seeking with each other and with with the Lord. Oh, yes. I, I've seen that happen over and over again because all of a sudden, if you start talking about something that's really challenging in your life and they go, oh, gosh, she can be real about this. I, I can do this, too. Like this can be that safe space. Right. And so right. you're spot on for modeling that for them and allowing it to become uh, very authentic. So thank you for for helping us with all those parts of prayer requests. Um, so this has been super helpful just to be able to think about prayer, <laughs> to be reminded of the parts of prayer, to be reminded mm -hmm. of how we can use it and even the tool on the website. Amy, do you have any encouragement for our leaders, any words of wisdom um, as we close that you'd like to share over them? Sure. I just would say um, that you are doing good, that you are um, just helping and teaching and showing the way for these other um, disciple makers in your group. Um, you know, be encouraged. Um, I'm always surprised by um, some of the stories and things that happen in my own group as I get to know these ladies better and better. Every time I leave my group, I'm always um, filled up, you know, and that that is such a blessing um, to share in this relationship with these ladies. And I'm very much looking forward to this year and um, the blessings that will will flow from it. Oh, yes, that's good encouragement right there, because you're right. Every time I leave my group, too, I'm just full of the Lord and full yeah. of it just leaves me feeling uh, well for the week. So, Amy, yeah. thank you so much for being our guest on the podcast today. We are just blessed by your presence. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> And for all those listeners out there, go to the website that Amy mentioned, 419disciplemakers.org. If you go to the search button and you type in prayer, I promise you a lot more resources will come up uh, that are not even uh, mentioned today. For sure, the targeted prayer request sheet will be there. But there's a lot of other things, uh, different ways to pray, um, imaginative prayer, Lectio Divina, um, all kinds of prayer tools. So uh, go out there and look at that. Hey, Maybe you have a friend that just needs to be encouraged to pray today. So send this podcast to them. Share it with them. So until next time, God bless each of you. For more information, check out our website, 419disciplemakers.org.